Hey, good morning, everybody in the room here, everybody who's tuning in online. We're so glad that you're plugging into the community. And this morning is the, uh, it's the Sunday after Thanksgiving. Uh, and a, a lot of us, I don't know, um, anyone like go around a table and, and ask people, what are you thankful for? Anyone? Anyone? Okay, you guys are doing it wrong. No. Um, uh, <laughs> someone who was at my table just pointed at me and said, no, you're the one who didn't ask that question. Uh, that's a lot of what the last week has been uh, for, for, for people uh, across this country is considering what are you thankful for. This morning is really about who are you thankful to? Uh, so our, our key text is Psalm 103 this morning. And before I dive into that, I just there's a couple things that I I, I want to make sure that you're aware of. Um, we have been talking a lot about character development, about the things that go on inside of you that are deeper than your conscious thought. What the psalmist today is is going to say, uh, going to refer to his soul, those things that are going on uh, behind the scenes. In your deepest parts, your character, and if you're running into ruts there, um, I, I just want to remind you that we have involved in New Day someone who's dedicated her life to helping people get out of mental, emotional, and behavioral ruts. Her name is Linda Larson Schlitz, and uh, she can work with you 
in uh, addressing whatever that rut is. Um, she does uh, counseling online or in person, and her, uh, her web address is, is uh, going to be in the chat. It's just lindalarsonschlitz.com. I also want to give you a Kenya update. Um, we're partnered with Lifeway Missions International. It's a, an organization that, is, that was started in and is based in Kenya, East Africa. Um, they're, they've been a part of a multiplying movement, and we're particularly focused in on a people group, the Samburu, and they mix sometimes with a, a people group called the Rendile. So the Samburu Rendile of northern Kenya are a people group that we're focus on and that we're praying for. And if you want to learn more about this, by the way, um, we've got a couple of copies of this book, Miraculous Movements, that was written about what's going on in Kenya. So uh, you're welcome to grab this, give it a read, and then just bring it back, put it on the, uh, put it on the shelf here so that someone else can read it, find out more about what's going on there. Um, we have a uh, uh, sent teams there, and we've met the indigenous leaders and the villages where people have come to Christ, and it's absolutely beautiful. Um, I'm sorry, I'm I'm just I'm I'm distracted for just a uh, for for just a second here. Uh, hold on, there we go. Yeah, Mike is uh, is doing our tech today. Uh, thank you, Mike. He's on it. He put this this picture up here. This is um, our, our own Rachel Allen's uh, artistic uh, I interpretation of an actual event that went on, on on one of our trips to Kenya. You can see um, Jacqueline's arm is the, the pinker one there. Um, we were on a, a Zoom call, some folks from New Day. And, and some of these leaders, which was kind of fun because some of these leaders had never been on a, a video conference before. So it was kind of neat to have them just go, whoa, that's, I know these people. Wait, that's me, you know, and, and how excited they were. Um, we talked to them. What are the challenges that you're facing? And, and some of the challenges are things like there's a lack of shade. <laughs> it gets really hot. So gathering uh, happens better under shade, and they just don't have enough of it. Gathering for a length of time is uncomfortable because they don't have chairs when they get together. Uh, people don't always understand some of the concepts that the leaders are trying to communicate. So there's an opportunity for some training of the leaders in uh, communicating the gospel, in having uh, opportunities to learn more about the gospel so they can pass it on. Transportation, always a, a challenge. So we're partnering with Lifeway to help the indigenous leaders in northern Kenya from those particular groups address some of those challenges. And uh, one of the ways that we can do that is by establishing a simple centralized facility where training can happen. So something that looks like this, uh, simple. Uh, placed, though, in a uh, where these leaders can more easily get there. Right now, they're traveling a lot farther to go to a, a place in order to have this training, and it really limits how many people can be trained there. So this structure was recently put up as a training center for a different people group in Kenya, and this is what it looks like on the inside. We can see uh, when that picture comes up, Dr. Isla on, on the far right, some of you were able to meet him when he came here this summer. So one of the important ways that you can be involved is to budget some of your Christmas money towards this effort. Um, inflation, yeah, has been bad in the United States. It's been much worse in Kenya. And a dollar goes a long way in Kenya. So we've uh, made a landing page for making financial contributions online. If you'd rather mail a check or bring in a contribution and drop it in the box by the, by the door here, um, you can do that too. Um, I, I just got word that the estimate for this project is $3,000 US dollars to put this structure up. And uh, we also want to send a team 
to encourage the work that's happening here and, and uh, to connect with these leaders face to face who we've met a couple of times already. It's such an encouragement to them to know there are people on the other side of the world who are thinking about them, caring for them, praying for them, giving sacrificially so that they can bring the gospel to their people and beyond. The cost uh, for sending us one person is about $2,000. That includes the flight, and it includes all the transportation and food and lodging. On the ground, it's about $2,000 per person. So we're raising funds. The first part of the funds will go towards this structure, and anything in addition to that will go towards uh, helping us get a, a team there. Um, so make sure if you make a donation online or mailed in or, or in the box here to include your contact information because we're producing Rachel's picture that you saw earlier uh, in a Christmas card. And this is something we did last year. We're doing it again this year, a card that says uh, a donation has been made on your behalf. More about the project that we're doing. We also have these uh, beaded bracelets that are uh, like what you saw in the in the picture. Um, we actually picked these up in Kenya last year, and they're, they're really, um, they're, they're the Samburu and Rendile uh, have such beautiful beadwork that uh, this is just a, a, a taste of it. So uh, when you make a contribution, you'll get that card, um, you, you'll get the bracelet uh, as a reminder to be praying, as a thank you for, uh, for, for your contribution. And if you want to give these as Christmas gifts, the recommended contribution f per bracelet and card is $50. So if you want to give four bracelets and cards, I encourage you to make a contribution of $200 or more to, for, for those four. Now, I, I, I feel even like... I know it's just helpful to have numbers like that. I feel weird like saying that kind of thing. I, I hope you know it's just uh, because I, I want to make I want to simplify it and I want to be realistic about the goals we're trying to reach. But if you want one of those cards and one of these bracelets and you just want to make a contribution, just one contribution, and you can't manage fifty dollars, then that's wh whatever you can manage uh, is is fine. If you can manage a lot more than that. Um, that's awesome. So another way you can participate is through prayer. We're working on getting more specific information and pictures about these individual leaders who are on the ground in the field there, the Samburu and Rendile disciple-making leaders, so we can have a 30 days of prayer and fasting guide in your hands for January leading up to a trip there uh, at, at the end of January. So um, right now, one of the things we can do is pray for the people in northern Kenya. Uh, we've been praying for them to have rain, and a couple of weeks ago, we celebrated that they got rain, and uh, the rain um, hasn't stopped. And unfortunately, it has caused some significant flooding. So I know, from drought to floods, it's the worst flooding they've seen in 100 years. Roads are uh, are, are taken out, tens of thousands of people displaced. So um, even as we think about and work towards establishing this training center, uh, we can pray for them and, and some of the struggles that they're facing right now. So let's do that. Let's pray. God, we, we are thankful. Uh, thankful for the, the roof over our heads, the shelter from the cold, uh, the chairs we can sit on, the scripture in our language where we can learn about you. We pray, God, that we wouldn't take these things for granted. We pray that rather than simply learning about you, we would be involved in what you're doing here and around the world, that we would listen and obey. And we pray, God, for our brothers and sisters in Kenya, Ethiopia, Somalia, where uh, these, these floods have been so devastating, where lives are being lost, where food sources are being destroyed. We pray, God, that in the midst of that, you would show up 
you would provide relief, that you would be their shelter, that you would be their rock, and that they would acknowledge you for your goodness, God, when they see how you're providing relief. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so, yes, we're coming out of this Thanksgiving holiday, varying levels of thankfulness. Like some people are relieved to have the stress of the big meal over, uh, to, to have some quiet in their house, and some people wish they had enough relationships to have a big meal. And other people are thinking about all that God has provided, and they're just feeling overwhelmed with blessing. We've some idea what this idea means to be blessed. And, and often in our minds, it means that you've been given uh, things, you've been provided situations, whether e- even it, maybe it's family, maybe it's health, maybe it's material things. And, and we say, I'm so blessed. This person who we looked at in, in Scripture last week, uh, who had many possessions, people around that man would have said, he's so blessed. Look at all his possessions. Obviously, God looks on him with favor and has blessed him. So it's kind of uh, confusing when a, a classic hymn first came out uh, way back in 2011, uh, where Matt Redman leads us in singing the words, Bless the Lord, O my soul. Bless the Lord? I thought he's the one who blesses us. So what does that mean? Well, that line wasn't originally written by Matt Redman in 2011. It goes back actually thousands of years to a song that King David wrote, and today we're going to take a closer look at that song, Psalm 103, and get a better understanding of what it means to be blessed and to bless the Lord. So if you have a a Bible handy and uh, would want to open it to Psalm 103, I'm actually going to be reading, this is a little different today, I'm going to be reading from the English Standard Version, ESV, uh, because um, I think that's what, uh, I think that's what, Matt Redman borrowed from. Uh, so I want to read it in, in that wording. So Psalm 103, starting in verse 1 in the English Standard Version, says, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Here we see King David talking to himself. Um, He's speaking from his conscious thoughts to his deeper self and saying, soul, my soul, the deepest parts within me, bless the Lord. Wake up and acknowledge God's goodness. When Jesus had this encounter with the man who had many possessions, one of the things that he said after that man walked away because Jesus said, sell all your possessions, give to the poor, and come follow me. He walked away sad because he had many possessions. And uh, Jesus told his disciples that it's very difficult for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And his disciples were confused because obviously someone who's rich has been blessed by God, so why would it be difficult for them to enter the kingdom? So Jesus is challenging their thinking about what it means to be blessed. He says, no, no, it's it's, it's easier for a camel to pass through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. And they say, well, if a rich man can't do it, then who can do it? And Jesus says, well, with man, that's, uh, it, it, it's, it's not possible. But with God, everything is possible. With God, everything is possible. So we, we see that blessing must be more than just stuff. And throughout Scripture, we see uh, that sometimes a blessing is positive words given to someone about where they are now 
and where they will be in the future. Um, I think about, like, I, I mean, I have a soundtrack for everything. I think about popular music all the time. There's like a, the song Forever Young is a song that's all about, it's all blessings. Uh, May you stay forever young is a statement of blessing. It's a positive uh, thought towards someone. And I'm doing this with my hands because often a blessing is done by putting your hand on someone or putting your hand towards someone and saying, this I wish for you. Positive things. So when David says, bless the Lord, O my soul, he's not saying give God stuff. He's saying give God praise. Speak positive things about who God is. So in verse 2, he repeats this statement where he's telling, David is telling himself to praise God. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and forget not all his benefits. And then he talks about some of the benefits. Benefit number one in verse 3. Who forgives all your iniquity. Iniquity is just like a, 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 a dirtiness. It's your sinfulness. It's the things that separate us from the holiness of God. And David is saying, remember, my soul, remember. He's talking to himself. Remember who forgives your sins, who heals all your diseases. And you might say, well, I know people who've had diseases that haven't been healed, even when I've prayed for them. Well, this is Paul, to, or I'm sorry, this is David talking to himself, and up to this point, all his diseases have been healed. And by the way, sometimes we don't give enough credit to God. We take for granted a lot of the amazing things that we have every day. I went to the, the eye doctor a few days ago, and on the wall is that, that cross-section chart of an eye. And I just looked at it and thought, all of that has to be working together correctly. And I don't do, like, I don't make it work. I take it for granted that all of these tiny, tiny pieces work together so that I can perceive the world around me. That's amazing. And that's just one system within thousands of systems in my body that work. They even, when they're damaged, heal. Like, let's not take that for granted. That's amazing. David continues, who redeems your life from the pit. I have value because he values me. I just... I, I want, I want you to, uh, this, this might be a little different, might seem a little bit weird. I want you to say that. I want you to say that out loud today because this is an important point. I have value because he values me. All right, let's just say that. I have value because he values me. That's an amazing thing to thank God for. David continues, who crowns you with steadfast love. Now, steadfast love uh, is a, uh, comes from a Hebrew word that has come up in the last few weeks. It's a word chesed. Um, it's translated here as steadfast love. It's really related to uh, an attachment with someone, a, a strong, meaningful attachment. David is saying to his soul, the Lord crowns you with chesed, this steadfast love and mercy. He makes you part of his family. Verse 5 who satisfies you with good so that your youth is renewed like the eagles. 
So in the first part of this song, David is saying to his soul, to his innermost parts, bless the Lord. Look at all the good things you get from him. Praise him. Give him good words. Don't be complacent. And then in part two of this song, he focuses on the character of God. Verse six, he says, The Lord works righteousness and justice for all who are oppressed. He made known his ways to Moses, his acts to the people of Israel. The Lord is merciful and gracious, slow to get anger and abounding in steadfast love. Guess what Hebrew word that is? Like I said, he will not always chide. Now, chide isn't a word that we use very often. It basically means to scold. He's not going to scold you all the time, nor will he keep his anger forever. Although sometimes he does scold and sometimes he does get angry. It's kind of what's implied there. Verse 10, he does not deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. This reminds me of a song, an old uh, newsboy song, where the, the chorus says, when we don't get what we deserve, it's a real good thing. When we don't get what we deserve, it's a real good thing. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his steadfast love, chesed, toward those who fear him. Now this fear that's talked about is going to come up again in this psalm. It's a response to love, not to abuse. Like sometimes I think about fear and I think about a dog that you want to pet and it cowers and you go, well, that dog has seen some action and it's not good. It's been traumatized. That's not the kind of fear that we're talking about. We're talking about a fear that's in response to love. But what does that mean? Abuse uses fear as a tool for power and control. Power and control is, a, a, is not real love. It's a counterfeit. Love nurtures and protects. So fear is acknowledging that I'm better off being under his protection then I am opposing him. The idea of opposing God makes me go, eh, I don't, I don't, that's not what I want to do. I want to come under his protection. I want to respect him. I want to honor him as he nurtures and protects me. That's what is being communicated here. And Psalm 103 verse 12 continues, as far as the east is from the west, so far does he remove our transgressions from us. Our transgressions, our, our crimes, our sins. And um, I, somebody put this image in my mind once, and I've shared it in, in the past. It's interesting to me. Now, David didn't necessarily know that uh, the 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 earth was, uh, was spherical. Uh, that wasn't like common knowledge at this time. And I know some people argue with that today. We're just going with it though, that we're, 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 we're round earthers uh, here. It's not written into our statement of beliefs. I'm just, that's the assumption that I'm, that I'm making. What's interesting here is that David says that as far as the east is from the west, so does he remove our transgressions from us. If he had said as far as the north is from the south, he could, he could have said that, right? Now, if we think about, if you're standing here and you are able to travel straight north, where do you eventually get to? The North, the north Pole. And if you keep going, then what direction are you going? You're going south. If, on the other hand, you were to travel east, at what point does east become west? It never does. So I'm not saying that David knew all about this uh, geography when he wrote this. It was under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, though, and I think it's kind of cool that he could have said as far as the north is from the south, and that could have been measured, but as far as the east is from the west is immeasurable. I think that's kind of beautiful. 
Verse 13, as a father shows compassion to his children, so the Lord shows compassion to those who fear him. Our our English word compassion literally means to suffer alongside. A God who is creator, who doesn't need to suffer, loves us so much that he feels our pain, that he cares. Verse 14, for he knows our frame. He remembers that we're dust. Okay, so if you're keeping track of the soundtrack, the dust in the wind comes to mind now. And you just add that uh, to, to the soundtrack. And that's appropriate for this next section where David is comparing God and humanity. Starting in verse 15, he explains, for, uh, uh, As for man, his days are like grass. He flourishes like a flower of the field. For the wind passes over it, and it's gone. And its place knows it. No more. All we are is dust in the wind. Verse 17, in contrast though, but the steadfast love keeps bringing this up. That connection, that chesed. The steadfast love of the Lord is from everlasting to everlasting on those who fear him. And his righteousness to children's children, to those who keep his covenant and remember to do his commandments. This is another way to develop the idea, those who fear him. The covenant God offers to us today is the offer of forgiveness for the past, life for eternity. To everyone who trusts that Jesus accomplished that for them by his death, on the cross, for our sins, for our transgressions, the punishment due to us, he took in our place and his resurrection to new, eternal, everlasting life that he invites us into as we trust him for that, as we believe in him, as we come under his protection as we seek for him to nurture us. Verse 19. The Lord has established his throne in the heavens and his kingdom rules over all. Jesus said, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Jesus is the king who rules over all. Now this establishing his throne in the heavens, his kingdom ruling over all, it's an important contrast to people who are like grass or like flowers who are here for a moment and then they're gone. Verse 20, David continues, Bless the Lord, O you his angels, you mighty ones who do his word, obeying the voice of his word. So David is talking to heavenly beings now. He started by talking to himself, and now he's talking to heavenly beings. Bless the Lord, all his hosts, his ministers who do his will. And then everywhere else in verse 22, bless the Lord, all his works in all places of his dominion. And then David wraps up this song, originally written as a song, wraps it up by saying, Bless the Lord, O my soul. When we recognize how blessed we are, our response is to bless the Lord. So let's take a a moment of quiet reflection. This is a time between you and God. This is a gift to you because life can be so busy. This is a time for you and God. And I encourage you to consider how can you bless the Lord? What does your soul have to say to God? 
What is he teaching you through what David wrote in Psalm 103? And what are you willing to do about it? So during these next couple of minutes, I encourage you to answer those questions, to write down a couple of notes as you think about it. What is God teaching me today? And what am I willing to do about it? And after this time of quiet reflection, then we'll go into a time of discussion. And I hope that you would have a a statement written. Consider a statement starting with the two words, I will, in response to what God is teaching you, something that you can share with other people. And if you've uh, been a part of New Day and you've been here the last couple of weeks and there's a statement you made, an I will statement that you did, then share that and celebrate it. Uh, celebrate what you did in response to God's teaching and, and share uh, so that we can celebrate and encourage each other. So take this time of quiet reflection and then we'll reconnect for discussion. All right, I hope something came to mind for you to take some action on. Um, last week, for a number of us, our I will statement was, I will fast and pray on Tuesday. And I uh, shared with my small group that, that it was my intention to do that. And I was, But the next challenge is, okay, then who are you going to share with? Uh, and uh, when I was talking to my small group about that, I said, you know, maybe I'll put like a Facebook post out that says uh, I'm, I'm fasting and praying today, and here's, here's why. And, um, uh, and it, someone in my small group, which is, this is good, this is, we, we need each other, uh, challenged me on that and said, that's, uh, people kind of expect that from you. You're a pastor. Uh, I'm not sure that's the most um, targeted, effective way for you to share with someone. And I took that challenge seriously and, uh, and, and, and then messaged someone um, who God has put on my mind, messaged him on Tuesday and said, I'm fasting and praying and I'm thinking about you. I'm praying for you. Is there something specific that uh, I can 
celebrate with you or that I can, uh, a challenge you're facing that I can pray for. Um, so that's just an example of how we can encourage and kind of challenge each other um, to not just take the easy way out, but to really make a difference in how we're acting and how we're impacting the world around us. So we have that opportunity now as we have a discussion. If you're in the chat, I encourage you to share in the chat something you're willing to do in response to this teaching. Um, and as we move into that time, let me just close us in, in prayer, uh, and, and then we'll go into that time of discussion. God, there is so much that we do take for granted. I pray that we would be a, a, a people who acknowledge and who recognize uh, your goodness, your mercy, uh, your, uh, your, your forgiveness, uh, your provision in, in so many ways. I pray, God, that we would be more than just grateful for the stuff. I pray that we would be praising you from our deepest parts, reminding each other and ourselves that you are worthy of our praise. God, may this week in our lives be characterized by praising you. Bless the Lord, O oh, our souls. You are so good. Lead us in your goodness this week. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, people in this room are going to gather around tables. If you're uh, in the chat online, share with other people in the chat. Uh, what is God teaching you? What are you willing to do about it? And, uh, and think about who you're willing to share it with this week. Mm -hmm.